In this video, seven tips for advanced insect macrophotography. I've done a lot of videos with tips for absolute beginners, but in this video I'm gonna give you some tips if you are not really a beginner anymore, but still want to take your insect macrophotography to the next level. And I'm gonna dispense these tips while I show some footage and pictures from my recent trip to Lisbon. And the first three tips are gonna be about finding interesting subjects out in the field. And my last four tips are gonna be about getting the best possible photograph. So let's get into it. Tip number one is about getting a really good guidebook uh, to find the species you're after. Uh, this is a good book. It has lots and lots of insect species that are common in Northern Europe. This book is specifically for Britain and yeah, I don't live in Britain, but I couldn't find the Swedish version uh, in print. So I took the one for Britain because it's, it's close enough. And what's good with having a book like this is that each insect in each location has a certain time span throughout the year where you can find it. For example, some species are only available between May and say August. So it's really good to know then if you're out to photograph a specific insect, which month you should look for it so that you can be ready when it is time to try to find it. Also a book like this will tell you in what kind of environment you will be able to find certain insects. And I find that when you have become a bit more advanced in macrophotography and when you have photographed all the really common insects, you get more and more interested in finding species that you haven't photographed before. And then I think it's a good time to buy a good book. There is also this variant, which is uh, kind of the same thing, but a lot smaller for bringing with you into the field. And yeah, this small book, of course, only has the most common insects, uh, but can be very nice to have with you on your macro photography trip. Tip number two is to use the website iNaturalist to plan your macro photography excursions and trips. For example, in the winter in Sweden, when we don't have any insects here, I like to sometimes travel to other countries to photograph insects, like I did in Lisbon recently. And to plan a trip like that, a website like iNaturalist is really, really awesome. So this website is like a big, big catalog of animal and plant sightings throughout the world. You can filter by month, or even week, you can filter out a region on a map to see exactly what species of insects, for example, or spiders or something else that have been reportedly found during a specific time span. So for example, if I am planning to go to Lisbon in the first two weeks of March, I can go in there and look at last year or the year before that in the first two weeks of March. What insects and spiders were people finding in that exact area back then. And this is of course great for planning a macro photography trip because you can know exactly what to expect in a certain location in a certain time of the year. So I use this website a lot to plan my photo trips and it can also be very interesting to check your own area where you live, what insects people have found there throughout certain times of the year, because then you can see what you have been missing, what insects that are out there that you could photograph that you haven't found yet yourself. Tip number three, if you're out in the field trying to find insects to photograph, but you aren't finding any or you aren't finding any interesting ones, one of the best methods that I know is to simply sit down. Sit down on the ground for one minute and just casually look around you. The amazing thing is that often you will find lots of insects that you didn't see when you were standing up because insects are small and hard to spot. So this is just a trick that I use all the time when I find myself in a place where there should be insects, but I, I don't see any. I just sit down and all of a sudden I get a completely different perspective. I can see under leaves on bushes. I can see what's in the grass. I can see what's crawling around on the ground. And usually I find a lot more insects when I do this from time to time. Tip number four, 
how to get the most beautiful photo. And here my tip is to hold the leaf or the branch or whatever the insect is sitting on. Not only will you get a more stable photo because you're holding it still, you can also rest the front of your lens on your hand that you're holding the insect with to get even more stability, which is great if you're, for example, focus stacking manually. But what's even more important than the stability is that you can compose your photos so much easier and so much better because when you're holding the leaf or the branch that the insect is sitting on with your hand, you can then adjust what's in the background. You can twist the leaf to get something else in the background. For example, if you change your own angle so that you have an interesting perspective towards the insect, you can also change the angle with the background so that you get, for example, a blue sky in the background that can make a photo a lot more beautiful to look at. So I always do this when possible. When the insect is not super skittish, I hold the leaf that it is sitting on, I twist it around to get different perspectives and angles, and I take several photos trying to explore what background is the nicest. And I think this is a really crucial part for a more advanced macro photographer to get the most beautiful angle of the insect and the most beautiful photo in general. And tip number five is kind of an extension to tip number four. Because when you're out on a sunny day, which you often are when you're photographing insects, you will soon discover that photos don't turn up that well when the sunshine is shining directly on the insect. You get this weird artifact, this weird glimmer on the insect, and it seldom makes for a good photo. You get the best photos, as you know, when you use a flash and a diffuser, and when the sun is not shining directly on the insect. But if it's not an overcast day, you need to get shade in some way. And my tip here is to, when you're holding the branch or the leaf that the insect is sitting on, if you're not able to block the sun with uh, yourself or your camera, one neat trick is to simply turn the leaf upside down. Then you automatically get shade on your insect and you can take a much better photograph. I use this all the time, but I don't speak about it that often. And you would be surprised by how often the insect is completely fine with you turning the leaf upside down while it's sitting there. <laughs> and then you can get a nice photo without any direct sunlight on your insect and it can still look natural because the insect is still sitting on its natural leaf or branch. Tip number six to get the best possible photo of your insect is the gradual approach. As you know, most insects are quite skittish, most individuals, not only species. And uh, when you approach an insect, it will often fly away, creep away, crawl away, jump away. Uh, but as you know as well, some individuals are more fine with you photographing them. And my tip here is to approach gradually while taking photos. When you spot the insect, try to take a photo from Maybe this distance, if that works well, then you get a little bit closer, take another photo, which will likely be a better photo because you're closer. And then you can try getting even closer. And if the insect still hasn't jumped away or flown away, then you have a really good model. You have found a good subject that is willing to cooperate and then you can get even closer. And then you can start doing the thing I told you about, about holding the leaf or the branch, because you know that this is a subject that will not care that much if you photograph it. And the nice thing with this method to approach gradually while taking photos is that even with the skittish subjects, you will get one or two photos of it as you approach and then maybe it jumps away. And then when you find the ones that are really willing to cooperate, you can easily spend like one or two minutes taking many, many photos of the subject because they are fine with it. Uh, so you always make the best of the situation using this gradual approach method. You get the photos you will be able to get with that particular individual. And tip number seven, which I actually started using quite recently as I switched to the OM system, is if you have an autofocus macro lens and you wanna use the autofocus, then I really recommend you to use back button autofocus. And as you might know, this is simply that you bind the autofocus 
uh, function to a button on the back of your camera that you can easily reach with your thumb so that when you press the shutter the autofocus is never engaged. You always have a separate button for the autofocus. And the nice thing with that is that when you find an insect sitting somewhere you just press the back button to, to focus and then you can get a rough uh, focusing for the insect. And then you can do the rest of the focusing with rocking uh, your whole camera and lens as you usually do uh, when you're focusing manually. So that way you can combine the best of both worlds. You can get a rough autofocus by using the back button and then you can fine tune it by moving the whole camera and yourself uh, to the right distance to get a nice focus on your insect. And I find that this method is really convenient and a great way to do macro photography if you're using an autofocus lens. And if you have any great tips for advanced macro photography, please share them in the comments below. See you soon again in another macro photography video.